we are back at it again. How y'all doing? Uh, ring the alarm, I got a bomb. Always got to start with this. Ring the alarm, I got a bomb. Ring the alarm, I got a bomb. Ring the alarm, I got a bomb. Ah, uh, so. Coming to you live from downtown Toronto, it's the one and only, your best, your host. It's me, Dr. IBZ. I don't even know how, yo, I forgot my name for a second. I forgot my name for a second. How's everybody doing? How's everybody's work day? Huh? How's everything going for everybody? I'm an idiot. I hit record. I forgot to grab my water. You know what I mean? Bruce Lee's favorite drink. You know what that is? Water! Huh? You don't think, if you don't think that was funny, well, guess what? Mario does. Mario thinks that's hilarious, don't you? Anyways, so um, what we're going to do for today, we're going to have lots of topics. But before I go in, hopefully everyone's having a good time out there, you know. Recession's coming. I'm telling y'all, yo, it's getting spooky out here. It's getting, it's getting spooky. It's quiet. It's quiet out here, I'm telling you. So everyone got to be on alert because I'm telling you that when the recession comes, save all your coins. Save all your coins, your pearls, your gold, all of that. Because it's coming. There's nothing you can do about it. Yo, I don't want to hear nothing. Okay? My parents can't tell me nothing. They, they, yo, they lived through two recessions and a pandemic. This, like, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, let's not get into that. But let's, let's see how everyone's doing. All right, round of applause. Okay. So we had the All Star Weekend. That was that was a uh, that was a thing. So I put in a parlay for the All Star Weekend, and so Bet three sixty five. They're like, "Yo, here's a quick quick five dollars. You know, you can bet for free." I was like, "All right, I'm gonna use that." I was like, "Salute to y'all." You know what I'm saying? Like, "Yo, we here." <laughs> Tell me how. I put in like almost oh, damn near the perfect bet. I had to just, I niggas just had to get ten points. Just four niggas had to get ten points. Okay, it was um, Shy. He got ten. I think it was LeBron James. He got ten, and I think Giannis or some shit like that. He got ten. Trey Young, <clears throat> brother Trey Young. All you had to do was get ten points. Ten points. I could have been eating good today. Ten points. Just needed ten points. Oh my god, bro. So, anyways, so now you know it's back to the drawing board, yo, dog. When I woke up the next morning, cause I thought it was a for sure bet. When I woke up the next morning, oh, hell no. and I'm like, hey, how many points did he score? Hey, yo, what the fuck? Five. Ain't no lie, baby. This guy's a five, 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 eh? I know people don't take the All Star game. Like serious, but niggas is running running parlays, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> Get at least ten plus points. Like, yo, do some of these niggas not know that some people are like, yo, bro, I put you down as my parlay. Like, do these guys not have friends or anything? I like, yo, I put you. Actually, no, that's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. And isn't that like insider trading or some shit with the gamble? I don't know. So that happened. Um, the the. What's his name? McClung, he won last year. He won again. Jalen Brown, we thought this nigga was going to be jumping out the gym. Jumping out the gym with this one. He was going to jump out the gym? That didn't happen. Nope. Dude, what the fuck? Wah, wah, wah. You know what I mean? <laughs> he would go up for a dunk. He would like to do funny misses. People were like, um, people were just recording, obviously, the funny parts of his uh, whole thing he decided to jump over kai sanat now no diss to kai sanat but kai sanat is like like i think he's shorter than i am right so he's pretty short and he's sitting down on a chair if kai sanat was standing up holding something you know what i mean then it would make a little bit more sense but he was just sitting down you know what i mean maybe they did a live stream while he was doing it like that was part of the gimmick but my nigga jaylen is it jaylen Jalen, Jason, Jason or Jalen? Mr. Brown. <laughs> Just, <clears throat> you ruined the dunk contest for us. 
a lot of people are like, yo, break, take, get away the slam dunk competition. If people are feeling the, the three-point competition, Dame time, you know what I'm saying? Dame one, you already know. Um, and then Dame won MVP, so congratulations to Dame. Um, then you had, you had like, and oh, Dame, Dame got booed because, Ty, I, I think it's in Indiana, I think. Yeah, it's in Indiana, I think. So Tyrese Halliburton. He is, he's from Indiana, so I think people wanted him to get the uh, the the MVP, but he didn't. It's okay. He's gonna live. He's gonna be fine. You know. You know he's gonna go back and score like thirty on these niggas now. You know. Anyways, so that happened. Then the moment we were waiting for was Steph Curry against. I'm not gonna put no disrespect on her name. I need to know who her name is. Steph Curry versus uh, Sabrina. It just says Sabrina. Come on, bro. Come on. We got to put respect on her name, you know? Steph versus... There we go. There, I'm going to get her name. So, oh, my God. I can't even pronounce her last name. Sabrina Ionescu. Ionescu? If I mispronounced it, my bad. You know what I'm saying? My bad. Don't worry. Bill Burr will say it for you. Bill Burr will say it for you. Dude, what the fuck? Damn. Anyway, so she she did 26, which was a good number. Steph Curry had Steph Curry did 29, right? Now, what did you guys think it was going to This is Steph Curry. What did you guys This is Steph Cordell Curry, dog. What did you guys think was going to happen? Like there's this is a lose lose situation. Whenever whenever a guy has to like, it, thank God it's for charity, right? They combine the points, and then it's not like oh whoever wins, and like you know they combine the points and they gave, you know they gave it to charity, whatever. Like that's good, and they also did like whoever wins, they get it to they it goes to their charity, whatever. You know I think it goes to both charities, so it's good. It's just charity tip, cool. Now remove that that just the aspect of guy versus girl, right? NBA versus WNBA, right? This can give um, this can give the WNBA an argument that we can shoot toe to toe, which is obviously like you know what I mean, probably you know what I mean. Um, however, it's always a lose lose situation when a guy is going against a girl because if he wins, it's like nigga you were supposed to win, and if he loses, it's like oh you got beat by a girl, like you know Twitter would have went off. Twitter would, have went, Twitter would have had a field day if this guy, yes, I still call it Twitter. I don't call it X. Looks like a porn app, yo. I'm like, I'm scared to even open it when I'm in public. If people don't know about it, like, they'll be like, this guy's watching porn out here. Because sometimes on the timeline. And, yo, let's speak about this. Ever since Elon bought X, it's just been, it's been way nastier. There's more bots. There's people commenting under a tweet and they'll just play a video. So it's like it's like you go on you go on a tweet and underneath the tweet there should be comments and replies and whatever, right? Nowadays you have other tweets and replies that have nothing to do with the tweet. So now I'm just I'm starting and then you have ads everywhere, like every like every few scrolls there's an ad few scrolls there's an ad and these aren't really like back in the day twitter had like proper ads like niggas that you know ads you know what i'm saying like oh shit there's a there's a shopper's drug money ad if you're in canada oh shit there's a mcdonald's ad oh shit there's a taco bell ad oh shit there's a best buy ad these niggas no I got scammed once because I, I was so used to, to the advertising being legit. I clicked on something, right? I think I, I signed up for a newsletter in my email, but I had auto autofill on my computer. So I just pressed the autofill. My number's in the autofill. Nigga, I've been getting scam calls ever since. Like, Dude, what the fuck? I was, oh. Why? Why? These guys call you? And they go, hi, how's it going? Oh, um, hi, my name is, and then like, and it's always like an like an Indian name. You'll see, like you'll see it, because I have caller ID and shit. If you don't have caller ID, you might just pick up the number, right? But if you have caller ID, you're gonna look at it and be like, I don't know this person. You know what I mean? 
There's only a few Indians that I know. And most of them, their last name is like, is like, I don't know. It's, I can recognize. It. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say their last name on the podcast, but I could recognize. It. You know what I'm saying? Easy. Easy. You know what I mean? Anyways, so when I started seeing that, I started noticing it, it just going down. When you look at quote tweets, you can't see all the quote tweets. You have to put the quote, you have to put the tweet in the search bar to get all the quote tweets and then you can see all the quote tweets. Before, you, you could you could get lost like 30 minutes on the app just looking at quote tweets. Now it's like you can only see a limited amount if you have a, if you have a certain account. I'm like, what are you doing? You're making people not want to be on the app anymore like that anymore. Like people will go on the app, see what's popping, nothing popping, boom, they hop right out. Now, before you could get lost in the app a little bit, now it's like, ah, oh, there's nothing popping. The moment you go on a tweet, there's a bunch of other tweets underneath ruining it. Like, anyways. Dude, what the fuck? That's just my little Twitter rant. So, NBA All-Stars, yes, that happened. We got plenty of other topics to talk about. That was just a quick uh, NBA All-Star recap. Um, what do we have today, sir? So, for today, oh, I thought that said one topic. I was like, dude, this is not what we're trying to do, man. So the YSL trial needs to be televised. Like, they need to make a doc. When they, when they drop the YSL trial documentary, when, when all this is said and done, when they drop the doc, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. I'm telling you, I'm watching that shit straight up. Because why Why did the defense attorney, Nicole Feig, Feigen, Fagan, arrested Feigen? Feigen, my bad. I thought it was like Fagan, 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 Fagan. We're going to stop. There's no way. So, like, there's no way you can convince me that. And so this is this is how it happened, guys, okay? In 2022, APD was investigating a double shooting on the northwest side of the city, and police learned that um, Fegan had contacted a suspect in the shooting, warning him about active warrants for his arrest. More, um, Fegan provided information she had learned during the preliminary hearing related to the shooting, advised that the suspect to dispose of his phone as police were going to arrest him. She was not representing him at the time. Fegan is charged with participation in criminal street gang activity and criminal solicitation to commit the offense of tampering with evidence. APD just confirmed that Fegan was arrested in Gwinnett County and transported to Fulton County. We're working on getting the warrants, but the hack is presenting a bit of a challenge. So, this, this girl, there's videos of her singing future songs, 21 Savage songs, like pop, pop. Oh, like, you know, go to trial. Like, we beat the case. Like, we don't um, F with, with snitches. And, like, I'm just looking at it like, God damn. God damn. Like, ain't no way. Ain't no, like, okay, I know hip-hop has come a long way. Because nowadays, yo, I remember 20 years ago as a kid. If I heard hip-hop in, like, a car, I knew it was a, it was a black person. You know what I'm saying? It was usually more, like 90% of the time as a black person. Nowadays, when I hear hip hop in a car, you never know who the fuck's driving. Right? Could be a black person, could be a brown person, could be an Asian guy. It doesn't matter. Like anybody could be a white guy. Some, sometimes, usually, you'll, you'll hear some white guys and they'll be bumping like them old, the oldies. You know what I mean? The old hip hop. But yeah, like hip hop has come a long way. And she's, I don't know how old this woman is. Um, I don't think they have her. Let me look up. Let's look up her age. Because she has to be young. There's no way. Like, Anyway, she seems, she seems like she's, she's young. Right? Nicole Fee age. She's 34. Yeah, she's 89, baby. She's 34. Not that far off from me. She's five years older than me. So, yeah. She's chilling, bro. She's chilling. Oh, she's born in Georgia? Nigga, she's born in Georgia. Come on, bro. Come on. She's outside when the resurgence of come on, bro. Come on, doc. Let's not let's not do this. When down south was starting to win, she was outside outside when down south started to win. She's five years older than me. I know she was outside outside. She she's she, you know, you know what I mean? So Ooh, that was nasty, eh? 
the way I opened that was nasty. Sorry to my visual audience. That was a that was a nasty nasty uh, little sip I took. Ew, did. Anyways, so I just wanted to know since she got arrested and she she had nothing to do with the case. She heard some info and relayed it to to them niggas. Now I know that this is a thing that that ju- that I'm um, not judge even judges probably, but they'd probably do with elite people. But I know they do this with law- lawyers and and cops. If you're if you're cool with a lawyer or you're cool with a cop, you went to school with him, you you grew up with him, whatever the case may be, and let's say they get caught up in some shit, people are gonna pull like what they do in the fucking Power or like one of those TV shows, pull up to your car, pull up to your crib at night. Hey, yo, man, I heard some information. Da, 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 you better lay low. Da, 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 and then they cut. And then in the future, it catches up to them. So there's nothing that she could do about this. Hopefully. I mean, like, you tampered with evidence. So they're going to they're gonna make an example out of her. I don't think they're going to charge her within the YSL trial. But she's one of the defense lawyers of the YSL trial. So imagine your defense lawyer, one of your defense lawyers, gets arrested for gang activity, right? And the very thing that you're getting tried for is gang activity. Like, oh, we're trying to say we're not a gang. That's their defense. We're not a gang. The prosecution, yes, you are a gang. One of your, one of your defensive lawyers decided to pull some shit, and now you guys look extra bad. Plus, you have the gunner statement. So when you think about it, there's a lot of things that need to be said. There's a lot of things that need to be understood. But this needs to be tell. This needs to be documented. I need Fifty Cent as executive producer. I need um, Donald Glover playing Young Thug. I need <laughs> actually. You should play Gunna. I think you could do. I think you probably play Gunna. Who who could play Young Thug? Who would play Young Thug? I don't know, Atheon Crockett could be Young Thug, you know what I mean? If you guys don't know what Atheon Crockett is, um, I don't know, Cat Williams is Young Thug? I don't know, bro. Anyways, all I'm saying is, if anything else happens, I'm going to report on it, but there's just too much. This trial, every, every two to three days, just when I think, oh, this trial cannot get any worse, it gets worse. It either gets better, worse for like, Better for the defense, or it gets worse for the defense. So, I at this point, it's up in the air for me. I don't know if, if Thug's going to beat this case. Like, YNW Mel, you can be like, okay, he has a chance to beat his case. They're still, like, BSing him around, making him, you know, do a retrial, retrial. Like, they're BSing him a bit. So, you're like, there's a chance where he might be able to, like, get out of that. But Thugger... It's up in the air a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, you know, everything is okay with these guys, you know. Um, speaking of, um, also, add add to the YSL trial. Fanny Fanny Will Fanny Willis, yeah, Fanny Willis of Fulton County, the DA or D not the DEA but the DA. She's being tried for having relations with one of the prosecutor, prosecutors that were that they were when they were prosecuting someone so now they're now their whole thing is looking like it's in shambles too so it's weird right <laughs> like the person that's prosecuting young thug is going through is going to court over mispractices and then young thug's defense's lawyer is also arrested over gang activity it's like Okay, this should be this should just be a mistrial at this point. And then they just redo it or something. I don't know. It should be a mistrial, yo. This is there's too much going on. You got what you got um jury members being exposed. There's too much going on, bro. And then you have this this cop. So there's this lady, right? This is a girl. She's with her friend. She calls th- the cops and I think Two cops pull up. Two to three cops pull up, right? Um, this girl wanted her car back. She's arguing with her boyfriend. She wants her car back. The man's like, basically not trying to give up the car because it probably that's only, um, 
what's what's it called? I don't know the I don't know the, their situation, but she called the cops on him because she wanted her car back and he wouldn't give her the car back, right? So he had the keys to the car, but he's like, oh, the car's at at the mom's crib, and then they called the mom, whatever. So as they're detaining the guy, they put him in the car. Um, the girl signs an affidavit. The lady's like, yo, I'm going to be with the girls right now. We're going to figure out where the car is. You just put the nigga in the, in the whip, and then we'll see what I want. Bro, why in the hell did, as this guy was, as, like, as this guy was just walking around, around the car, an acorn fell. And before this, before this, they asked the girl, does he have any weapons? Is he, does he have any weapons on him? Da, da, da. She's like, she's like, yeah, he has a weapon, showing them pictures. Yeah, he might have a silencer. Like, making the cops fear for their lives even more. Like, damn, we got a, we got a sicko or something like that. And he stole her car. And there's a female cop there, too. So the female cop is going to have a lot of sympathy for the crying girl in front of her. So she's not going to be playing with that nigga. And you're already telling me that he might be strapped? So now they're a little bit on edge. An acorn falls on the freaking car. This nigga does not think it's an acorn. He thinks, after patting the nigga down, and it's on video that they patted him down, he thinks that the nigga is busting from the whip. I don't know how, if they handcuffed him and he's like this, I don't know how he can get his gun and start shooting like that. Even if he was, he's not going to really hit you. He can't really get a clean shot like that. So what would you even be scared for? That's number one. Number two, he he did a duck and roll and he unloaded the clip into the whip. Now I'm thinking that nigga's gone. He's dead. That's what I'm thinking. The other lady's running out, the female cop. She's like, she's like, everyone, go back in your house. What's going on? He's like, I'm hit. You're hit. She starts loading in the whip too. Thank God. I'm thinking, this nigga's dead. Turns out he's not dead. So thank thank Allah that guy's still alive, right? Now, as the gunshots were going off, you could hear his girl, the, his girl in the background screaming, no, no, they shot him, no. She's like regretting her decision of getting the cops involved, right? So for a moment there, she's thinking this nigga's dead. She's screaming, no, oh my God, I can't. She's screaming, dog, in, in like, and the cop, the female cop's like, yo, chill, like, you know, like, so anyways, the dude unloads, he's walking, a bunch of feds pull up now because shots are fired, a bunch of feds pull up with, with, with assault rifles and thing. He's like, man, I think I got hit in my vest. My legs went numb. Dude, what the fuck? Are you really, like, appar like bro, apparently he was being straight, boom, boom. Straight, boom, boom, da. Why... Would you, uh, now you have, now, so now he, um, he had to resign. He's done. Um, the other cop, she's okay because if my, if my, if my partner's shooting, I'm going to shoot too because I don't know what's going on and there might be a threat. And if he says he's hit, I'm going to believe my partner over anything right now. So, right? So she's assessing the threat. She did what she did her job. So this is when. I don't really feel bad for for when they get resigned like that because the nigga still the nigga could have been dead, but the fact that he's still alive, yo, get your bag, my G. My guy. Get your money. Get paid. Get paid. If I was him, I I think they have a lawsuit. I think they have a lawsuit, but I'm suing. I am knocking on any lawyer's door and say, I have a case for you. And they'll do a pro bono. Any lawyer will take this case. Pro bono. He probably had five, ten lawyers calling his phone saying, like, I could represent you and we can get the bag from these motherfuckers. Cause you're suing the the city, the county, whatever, you're gonna get you're gonna get a few milli. You're gonna get and you're gonna break off your lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, that to me is crazy because I feel like okay, I don't understand why people think it's okay to be that pussy dog you know what i mean like there's so many ways you could have handled that situation you already patted him down he has no weapons she told you she may have he may have a weapon in the whip but not on him 
How can he shoot? How can he shoot you if he's already cuffed in the back? If someone is cuffed and detained, right? If someone is detained and arrested, they're being arrested and detained, they are cuffed in the back. So they can't really do anything. There's not much they can do. And the cuffs are usually tight. There's not much they can do. There's a reason why they handcuff you and put your hands behind your back. You know what I mean? You can try to move all you want, shift your waist, grab the thing, And then what are you going to do when you grab the thing? How are you going to shoot? How are you like... Are you going to shoot through the window? And even if you did shoot through the window, like, you know, like, it's just weird. It's just, I don't know, it's just weird to me that this nigga thought, that he, and he's like, I got hit. But he was just being being a punk. So I don't think, I think they need to have um, some type of evaluations for uh, for feds. Because to me, if they don't do, if they don't have some type of reality check, or not reality, but like mental evaluation for 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 feds to just to see how, if you if you're the type of nigga to panic in a certain in certain situations, you should not be a field fed. You should be a parking enforcement, the on the desk job doing paperwork, handling whatever the case may be. But you are not supposed to be out here in the field if you're if you're that pussy. You know what I mean? Anyways, so, man, I feel bad, but I don't at the same time. So, you know, Ben Zeno was just on uh, Drink Champs the other day. Ben Zeno. I don't got nothing against some of them. I got nothing against some of them that can rap, but I care about us more. I don't want to go through, I don't want to talk about it no more. I don't want to, 22 years, every time I do an interview, they ask me about Eminem. The fuck you want me to do? Come on, man. My daughter came into the industry figuring that, hey, I got to be cool with Eminem because everybody's against my dad. You think this shit is fucking cool? No, oh, man. Ooh. We're failing as a people. Oh, I don't man. hate Eminem. I don't know him to hate him. I don't hate white people. I'm tired of this shit, man. It's just too much. I don't want to be the bad guy. I got an eight-year-old son that I dropped off at school this morning. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm all right. I don't want my DMs filled with... I've had nine pages knocked down a million. White people think... I love, I love all people. Come on, man. All me and Eminem got to do is sit down and talk with each other. Let's sit down and talk. Let's battle. Let's do whatever. But let's at least face to face meet each other. If, if that was to happen, would you give him a five? Fuck it, man. I'd hug him. <laughs> now, this is how I know this is Cap. He's just drunk. You know the liquor hits? When the liquor hits you and you get emotional like this, oh man, all your mistakes in the past. Because this was this nigga, right? Right before the thing. We here tonight. Huh? Oh, fuck Eminem. <laughs> and fuck everybody down with Eminem. And my thing is this, bro. Oh, no. My thing is oh, this. <laughs> my thing is this. Oh, you don't that, nigga ain't, time, so. that nigga won't face me. Uh, nigga. That's him right before. This is the same interview right before doing that. Now, if we're going to get into the history of Benzino and Eminem, my, my kids, not my kids, but my, my, the kids that don't, that, that weren't around at the time. What did I say? My kids. That's kind of fucked up. That's weird. That's weird, bro. My bad, guys. Apologize for that. You know what I'm saying? Apologize. Dude, what the fuck? But back in the day, Eminem came out and he was murking shit. Benzino wasn't liking it because he's like, yo, hip hop is a black thing and I don't want... Eminem to come out of nowhere, he becomes one of the bigger artists, and then now a lot of uh, black people can't get the same benefits and the opportunities because Eminem took them. That that was his whole premise. So he was trying to get at Eminem, trying to ruin his career. He dropped the tape where Eminem was making fun of. I think I think like when he was rapping, he was making fun of I think black women, and I think I don't know if he said the N word, but it's one of those tapes, right? I think they call it the N word tape or something like that. This is back in the day, early two thousands. And he was part of the Source magazine, a hip hop magazine that was very influential in hip hop culture at the time too. You know what I mean? So 
when I hear this guy crying and thing, trying to be like, oh, Eminem, 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 bro, you started this shit. You put it on yourself. Then you publicly start talking about Eminem. Eminem does want nothing to do with you. He thought you were a joke. He's going to always think you're a joke. This just makes it, he's going to laugh even more. Do you think Eminem's going to sit down and squash it with you? You crying and shit on the drink jams? He's not going to. The only person that should probably feel bad for you that's like, you know what, I'm going to call my dad is Coyle Ray. That's the only person that should be, you know, I'm, I'm going to call my dad, yo. He's going through it. Let me like, let me talk to this nigga. Let me make sure he's okay. Let me, let me create a better bond with him. That's what, that's the only person that I feel like should do, be doing anything is her. Everybody, everything else is just bull, bull crap to me. Why do you think that now, now that we're in the future, all you have to, now you're trying to plead, yo, bro, I'm sorry. You want to know why? Internet trolls. When you get at a certain artist, if when you get at them, bro, your comments are going to be flooded. You're still going to get a lot of engagement on your shit, but your comments are going to be flooded with a lot of hate. You know what I mean? A lot of hate. I know people are going to find some shit that I said in the past. Use it. It's going to blow up, whatever the case may be, when I'm already like at a certain point. You know how people are. I'm going to be at a certain point. You know, I'm going to blow up, be at a certain point. Then people are going to try to look through through the past podcast and be like, yo, do you hear what he said? He said this. Oh, he said this. Yo, check his YouTube. Check his YouTube. Da, da, da. That's why I did 100 episodes first, and then the rest are on YouTube. Like, I mean, like you know what I mean? So only there's only like 100, 100 something episodes on YouTube. The, the original 100, you got to go all the way back and listen to those if you're willing to listen to those. There are some shit in the in the YouTube ones, but we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? You know when you go on a rant and you're like, yo, this is the one. It's not the one until you do it a short. When I make a short about a rant, numbers go up. But when I have like the rant and I clip it or whatever, like it's not really a lot of, a lot of it depends on what the clip is, right? But lately I've been trying to not trying to, I don't really do this, but I'm not trying to clout chase in terms of like finds. I usually try to find something that I personally disagree with so then I can actually have some type of emotional attachment to what's going on, right? If it's not like that, then it's not going to come out um, authentic. It's just going to be me yelling into a mic like, oh, what the fuck is this guy on? Like, you know what I mean? And you got to flow with it. Can't just be yelling all the time in the mic. You got to flow with it. So anyways, Benzino. Like, I don't feel bad. Like, you created a diss song. People were saying, yo, Benz, Benzino, rap, rap. You were up, bro. And then you walked in. They're like, fuck Eminem. I was like, all right, cool. Keep that same energy. Then at the end, you you fumbled, dog. You fumbled. You drank too much, man. The alcohol hit. That When that Henny hit, bro, when that Henny hits your feelings, when it goes whoa, right in your feelings... My yo, wouldn't that handy hit your feelings? <laughs> Anyways, so there's a lot of things that I like to uh, contribute towards the podcast in terms of topics, right? I like to have like a little flow. So there's so the the end result. Of the of what I'm trying to say is is that one one don't beef with Eminem. That's that should be apparent. Two, if you really wanna if you really wanna sit down and 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 squash it, you have to know a nigga that knows Eminem and be like, yo, next time you see M, yo, let him know. Da, da, da. I don't know. Holla at Royce. I know I'm pretty sure you can get a hold of Royce. Pretty sure you can get a hold of one of these niggas and create squash it first you squash it publicly you go be like yo no more beef with this nigga and then one day in private he'll call you up you guys squash the shit boom that's it if you really want to squash it but you started it you started it you know what i mean so there's i don't feel bad and you know, when that liquor hits your feelings bro it's over So, um, this, this, 
this this tweet went viral in the in the community um i don't know man it's it's weird it's a weird it's a weird it's a weird vibe you know because you know those 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 spots where people go to and it's um it's like the speed dating concept but with a camera basically that's basically what it is so like let's not let's not act like we don't know what it is so this is what happened right these, this one youngin, she is 21, is speaking to a 38-year-old doctor, right? You're handsome, for sure. one. You only like and me because I'm beautiful. It's like, I'm beautiful. Yeah, but that's not why I would only like you. So why would you like me? Because you didn't answer that. Because you can bring something and add something to my life. But because you're a liability, you right. can't add anything to my life. Right. You would be a liability to everything in so my life. So what can I not add to your life? What, what is that? You can't teach me anything. Mm -hmm. You can't help me with my finances in any way. So he's going off on her about this type of shit, right? I don't want to keep hearing this nigga. So he's going off on her. And uh, the the community, Black Twitter, is having a field day with this. Stuff. There's been a lot of think pieces about this. Now, I'm here to tell all of y'all. I'm here to tell all y'all. That... It's just his personal preference. Isn't that what we've always been saying? You can't, you can't kink shame or whatever. That's just his personal preference. He's looking for someone that is smart, educated, can help him boost his life, right? As he's boosting hers, right? That's probably what he's... Whatever, dude. Do you, do you guys still want to hear this nigga? Together, you please said I can't bring down. you anything. So it's like, what, what, you know, right. there's no need to talk. You can't bring anything right now. Of the okay. So. Let's look at it like this. The nigga's 38. You're 38. What are you doing talking to a 21-year-old? I don't even know why you're on this dating thing. And what are you doing talking to a 21-year-old and talking to her like that? Anybody that's 21, if you try to, if you try to, even like 18, 19 year olds, if you try to talk to them like they're stupid or like, oh, you're too young, you don't know shit, it hurts. It hurts. It kicks them in the feels. They don't like that shit. They, when, when, you know, when 18 year old, 19 year old, or the moment, the moment, the moment they, they lose their virginity, now all of a sudden they're adults. You know what I'm saying? When in reality, no one's really a full, like, no one's really adulting, adulting out here until, like, you hit, like, 20, late 20s. That's when it starts to click for you. Fun fact. Till then, you're going to think you're grown. <laughs> Watch, the day will hit you. Anyways. In reality, he's correct in a way where he, there's nothing that they can really talk about, vibe about. This nigga's 17 years older. So when he was 17 years old, already has his personality, already developed, already knows what he wants to be, a doctor, all this type of shit. Do you think, you know what I mean? That's how he's thinking about it too. So it's like, I understand where, I understand where she's come from. Like, what do you mean I can't bring anything to the table? Like, I'm, I'm 21, I'm young, da, da, da. Like, she still has time to figure out what she has to do in life. So he can't really diss her and knack her for being 21. And, oh, you can't bring anything to the table, da-da-da. Well, teach her something then, my nigga. Teach her something, and then maybe she could learn something, and then that could... Now, that's how I would look at things. If I feel like if I feel like someone someone doesn't bring whatever... If, let's say I'm talking to a girl, and oh, she, oh, I don't know if she can bring anything to the table. If, if I could teach her something, she could teach me something, we could learn off each other, cool. You can learn something. You can always learn something. A lot of people like to assume that just because someone's a certain age, that they're stupid. But that's that's another story for another day. Because not every 21-year-old, oh, man, you're 21. What am I going to talk to you about? There's a lot of 21-year-olds that are smart out here, finishing up, finishing college, right? But, yeah, 21, they're on, like, their third, fourth year of college. They're about to be done, or university, or whatever the case may be. They're about to be done. They some they're probably living at home most likely, but so yeah. But for the ones that ain't doing their thing, you know, living the college lifestyle, you know, in dorms or they're living on their own in apartments, whatever. At at that type of age, there's a lot of there's a lot of girls that do that. Do you do it? They have, and but they have roommates and shit. 
do you do your thing, man. You could teach her something, she could teach you something. I don't know. But we shouldn't when we do these type of things, we need to we need to make sure that we pair the ages right with the right age. Like you can't you should have thirty eight year olds talking to third to people in their thirties and then people in their twenties talking to people in their twenties. Having a thirty eight year old talk to a twenty one year old, she automatically even if it was the even if it was <clears throat> the genders were reversed or whatever the case what, what this sex gen you guys know what I'm trying to say. If it was the other way around and she was getting at him like that, a lot of a lot of guys would get butt her like, yo, this nigga's not even he's not even that grown yet. His frontal lobe's not developed. Like, you know, you're gonna hear dumb shit like that, right? And but then she's right and the youngin's right. At the end of the day, they're both right. She can't you can't really get at her for not bring. Oh, you can't bring, bring give me anything to do. She's twenty fucking one. What is she gonna give you a bring to the table? She just she's just legal enough to drink. Worldwide, that's what I think. Worldwide is twenty one. So like, what are we talking about? Especially what they're probably in America. So twenty one is she probably been drinking a one two one two right? But I'm talking about twenty one is. Is the legal age. So she probably just started getting out here, seeing the scene and shit. She does, probably doesn't know too much out here. Who knows? She hasn't been outside, outside 21. That haven't been outside, outside, outside of 21. You know what I mean? So I could understand him saying whatever. I don't know why I equated it to drinking, but maybe she's still in school. Maybe she hasn't figured out what she wants to do in school. Okay, that's cool. Nigga, you, you're 38. Nigga, you're about to be 40 in two years. Nigga, you're about to be... Good. You already know what you're doing. You're a doctor, apparently. Like, come on, bro. You can't look at her and judge her and then think, oh, I'm better than you because because you can't bring nothing to my table. So since you can't do that, I'm going to I'm gonna step on you and or I'm going to treat you like trash. I don't like when people do that. I don't like people that think they're better than everybody because of the position they are in life. I don't give a fuck. Of, you know, I don't give a fuck who you are. You could be a janitor. You could be a cleaner, a cleaner. You can be a, a a dishwasher, a chef, a CEO, the, the a banker, whatever the case may fucking be. As I like to say, you will get the same type of respect, same type of energy from me. That's just how I am. I try to be chill, calm, good vibes. That's how I try to be. If I get disrespected nowadays, I've learned how to just calm down, say why I feel a certain way. That person will understand, and then I just leave it. If you keep it going, oh, you're going to lose your mind. You know what I'm saying? So you just leave it. And, or sometimes you don't even have to say anything. You're just like, is this worth it? It's worth me getting mad. Then after I get mad, now I got to cool down. But as I'm cooling down, I'm still getting mad over that shit. Or can I just be like, okay, that's annoying. Is it going to affect me in five minutes? No? All right, cool. We're done. <laughs> All right, so these type of content, I, I don't really watch it that much. It's just, it, to me, it's it's annoying. It's Some of them is funny. Like, some of them, it, it's like, okay, it's, it's interesting because they throw, like, they make it interesting. Like, that whole the button thing, that shit is interesting. The whole, oh, rate yourself, everybody, like, five guys or five girls will rate yourself from one to five and you try you get to see who's being fake who's being real like those type of videos are cool but when you see the one that guy's standing there and then he's like oh i don't like you i don't like you it's like come on bro like it's just it's weird i don't know it's weird it's weird content it's just it's just speed dating that's it I don't want to hear niggas being like, yo, we're the first ones to do it. We started it. Yeah, you probably started it on a platform like YouTube and shit. But niggas been doing that. That shit's been on TV. Speed dating. Blind dating. Like, this, that shit's been a thing. So, like, let's not act like, you know, like, nigga, you know, you know how people be, dog. Oh, we created it. We're the ones that created it. We, you know. When people have that pride, boy... Anyways, so the Canadian government has really been, 
I've been, I've been very critical lately, and I've never been really that critical of the Canadian government, but the past, like, th three years, I don't know what the hell's going on, okay? We have so much money that needs to go towards grocery legislation, um, housing legislation, not just for immigrants, but for other people, too. Um, how to lower costs for the landlords so then the, the landlords can kind of give the renters a little bit of a break for, for their rent and you know anything. Or, yo, here's, here's a quick, because a recession's coming. So I'm telling y'all, it's coming. So there's all these things that are happening. They're building legislation to pass a bill to get rid of uh, corn, corn, like you have to do an age verification for corn hub and then because they don't want minors to have access to it. I'm telling you this right now. Minors will find a way to get that corn. I'm telling you. They will get the corn no matter what they want. They will get it. When you're 13, 14 and your hormones are kicking in and you know how and you have a cell phone, my nigga, you you're going to know how to get that shit. Whether it's there's so many websites. So that means you'd have to age verify so, okay, those websites we'd have to do. And those websites, yeah, are you 18 or older? You click, yeah, but, like, maybe you'd have to, what, post your ID, my nigga? So then now these these, these databases are going to have our IDs. No one wants to put their ID on a, on a corn website. Unless they're buying, and most of the time it's just a credit card, bro. Like, no one wants to be putting their ish on there. You're basically putting everyone's ish on blast, basically, bro. Like, what if someone hacks into the system one day and exposes everyone's shit? Like, you don't want that. So, that's what they're doing. Then, you have Canadian intelligent admits to spying on parents who opposed um, child sex changes. <laughs> Bruh. What are we doing as a nation? Dude, what the fuck? What? Did, did, did you did we really need to spend resources and money on that is my question is that really something that us Canadians really need to combat is it something that has been a problem that needs to be fixed because from what I know you're spying on people parenting their kids. People are going to parent their kids. Yo, your parents are going to tell you, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, don't do this, right? And they're going to show you right from wrong how the way they see right from wrong. You're going to get older. You're going to create your own right from wrong. If, depends, right? But most kids, as they get older and as they start doing their own thing, their morals change a little bit. Or oh, you used to be a certain, like, when you're around your parents, you're a certain way, right? <laughs> but then when you're not around your parents, you're a certain way. You know what I mean? Me, I'm a little bit different. I tell you, I don't give a fuck who you are. <laughs> Everyone just gets respect. If, if, I, if, if, you, if you, the respect is obviously, like, if you're my mom, you're going to get unlimited respect. Da, da, da. The, way I, the, the way I dish out the respect now is different. You know what I'm saying? If I have the ultimate respect for you, like my dukes or something, I'll kiss your ass a little. I'll kiss your ass. Not a little bit, but I'll kiss your ass. You know what I mean? If I have respect for you, like my brothers or whatever, if I, if I, like, nigga, you could be yelling at, at the phone. I know you're not yelling at me, but I'm not going to be like, yo, man, watch your tone, bro. Like, I'm not going to do that. But if I was, if I was outside and there's if some random stranger comes up to me and he starts yelling and shit and he's not yelling at me, but he's yelling pissed off at some shit, I'm just going to be like, all right, bro, chill the hell, chill out, bro. Like, leave me alone. Or I'll just be like, yay, and walk away. Like, I'll be a little bit, like, on edge. You know what I mean? I won't be as calm and respectful and be like, no, don't worry about it, man. It's okay if you're yelling. It's all good. I'll be like, hey, why are you yelling, bro? Why are you yelling? You know what I mean? That's how I'd be. So, where was I? Um, oh, yeah. So, the one thing that I don't agree with is spying on parents. Child sex changes. This is not like these these kids are teenagers. These kids are these are children. Children. 
a lot of parents are opposed to that. I'm, and I'm not talking about minority parents. I'm talking about a lot of parents. Majority, minority, everything. I would say 80% of parents are like, no, like, that's too young for a child. Like, a child, a sex change as a kid, like, that's, that's too much. <laughs> like, everyone has their limits. Everyone has their boundaries. Me, that's, that's like, for me, I feel like, that, like that's too much. Let some people wanted to be a fucking dinosaur when they were when they were little. There's not that doesn't mean that you know what I'm saying. So let, let them let them live a bit, let them develop a personality, their own way of like how they see the view of the world, that type of shit. You know, you hone in on that, and then when they're a teenager and they go, "Mom, I'm like I feel like I'm like this." Then you, all right, we're gonna support you. Da, 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 da. But let them come up to you. <laughs> and discuss it with you when they are at a certain age, like when they're teenagers. Because when you're a teenager, you have more of a, yeah, you might do th- more things out of impulse or whatever, but you might feel a certain way, so it's easier for you to convey it when you're a teenager compared to being a child. You know what I'm saying? You know more words. <laughs> you know more vocabulary. You know how to express yourself a little bit more. So it's it's easier and it's good to have good parents, obviously. If you have good parents, then, yeah, obviously it's going to work out. But why are you spying on parents? You're wasting resources, is what I'm saying. You could be, you, y'all could have been spying on, on, on the, the CEOs of the grocery stores and all that shit. Y'all could have been spying on them niggas. Being like, yo, why are they price jacking the shit so high up? Bro, I seen, I was at the grocery store. I seen a nigga buy some groceries. And he didn't buy that many. He bought like, he didn't even, you know when you fill up the whole, the whole cashier spot? And that used to be like $150, $200 worth of groceries. And you're stacking shit too. Nowadays, nowadays, that's like $500, $600 now. You heard what I said. That's like five hundred, six hundred dollars now. Why? Why are we just bringing these niggas to Congress? Why are we not spying on them? Oh, we're gonna spy on our people, but we're not gonna spy on them that are actually disrupting like shit. Like I, you know, whenever people are in, at the grocery store, I'm just looking at them. They're like, man, I don't even want to. It's either I buy a bunch of groceries that are already expensive. Eating out is already expensive. Sometimes, if you let's say let's say you're like okay tonight I want I want to eat this, you go to the grocery store, you get what you get right, and let's say you check you're like okay, if I buy all these ingredients it's gonna be about twenty bucks. This meal's gonna last me tonight and maybe lunch tomorrow, right? Twenty dollars, I can go to X Y Z, get the same, get the probably something similar, and it's gonna be this have the same effect, and I might save five dollars. Like when 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 home prices are starting to match outside prices, like some days I'm looking outside, I'm like, okay, I have five bucks, right. If chicken wasn't un like if I couldn't if I didn't find like certain spots where you can get chicken for like three four dollars and you can get ground beef for three four dollars my nigga I'd be I'd be literally like <laughs> I'd be copping tuna cans and like a, a and a buddy burger pause pause on that dude what the fuck pause on that but yeah so end of the day. I don't know what we're doing as a nation. I think we're. I think what what my point is is like it's like the plastic straw and the plastic bag legislation and all that whatever that they passed. We're wasting money and resources on these issues that a small percentage of the population actually care about. We care about groceries. We care about the taxes, the carbon tax. America, apparently America doesn't have a carbon tax, but we do. And we have like tenth the amount of people, a tenth of the amount of people. It's, it's stupid little things like that. That it's like we're wasting all this money where we're spending money that we don't have. The Canadian people have been 
being sucked dry. Pause. You know, like, it's just, I don't know. This is weird to me. How you're you're focusing on all these other things that you don't really have to focus on when the American people are not the American people, the Canadian people are suffering. This nigga's going on vacation. Like, if I'm the PM and I know the economy's effed up, I'm not going on vacation. I might go to my cottage. I'm not going to Jamaica. This nigga's going to Jamaica, going on like a fly like bro, go help help us, nigga. <laughs> Holy Instead, we're doing shit like this. We're like, oh, man, we're going to have to age verify on... Like, I don't know why he wants to control the internet so much. He tried to control podcasting. Why? Justin, why? This is freedom of speech. You try to... Freedom of speech that literally your your dad was part of the reason why that shit got even signed, my nigga. Like, and you're... you're t- like, what are we talking about, bro? We have, like, we have rights, and you're literally like, no, I don't like what you, if I don't like what you say, then we're going to flag you. We're going to shadow ban. And it's just like, come on, man. Good thing, like, when you create an audience, you don't have to rely on the shadow banning and all that. People are just going to look you up. People are going to find you. You're going to pop up on the algorithm. However, when you're trying to get it, it's going to take a lot longer for you to get it, you know. But I don't really care. Master acting like a true hoe. Okay. So now we have another dumb thing that happened. And this is this is my last my last topic. And then after that we are done. Because I'm tired of of how how I don't know why people are acting like this. Look at him. Y'all see this? Look at me. Y'all see how I look right now? This man that brought me on a date to Shake Shack. Like, of all places, right. look at him. Right. So, we have this again. I'm going to summarize the video for you because y'all don't even want to hear it. Like, the way this girl's talking. One, a lot of people are like, this this is this is fake. I don't believe anything on the internet now. This is fake. I, for one, am 50-50 on the, if it's a skit or not. One, I'm looking in the video. The man looks cheesed. That's number one. Two, people, stop exposing other people online. Stop trying to embarrass them online in front of hundreds of thousands or millions of people. Stop trying to do that, trying to get that for some type of clout, some type of, oh, guys, look at me. This guy's trying to take me to Shay Shack. Let me go viral. So then now you go viral. There's going to be a simp-ass nigga in the comments going, yeah, I'll, I'll take you somewhere. Da, da, da. They're going to hop in her DMs. Now, you know what I mean? Now she's going to get her shit off. I'm at 100, 100%, 100%. Anyways. There's also, it's the first date. Most niggas, most niggas would, like, most niggas, like, they'll go, you'll, they'll take you to, like, a, a place that's, like, a bar that has good food. So the drinks are cheap, and the food is cheap. The bill might come out to, like, $150, $200, right? But, like, that's just, depends on the certain circumstances. In this economy, he might be like, yo, 50 bucks, we're going to Shake Shack. Now, if... You didn't want to go to Shake Shack. Why would you sit down, order the food, and then get your phone out and start to diss him? If you didn't want... Hey, yo, here's the thing. If you don't want to go on dates with these motherfuckers, they go, yo, we're going to go to McDonald's. We're going to go to Shake Shack. You know what you do? You go, you know what? I don't like going there on the first date. You give them another chance to pick another spot. If you still don't like it, don't go on the date. Ask the nigga before you even go on the date. Yo, where are you going to take me to? Oh, yeah, I was thinking we are going to go eat and da-da-da-da. Okay, what were you thinking? Oh, this type of food. Okay. If he just says this type of food, then you're like, okay, we might be going and he might surprise me with a restaurant. But if he tells you, sure, we're going to Shake Shack, uh, buy the buy the menu then. You can get bare shit at Shake Shack. You can spend $100 on Shake Shack on his dime if you wanted to, if you really wanted to. Can leave home with some shit, a goodie bag or something. The nigga would have had you. The nigga seems like a decent guy. Like, you don't have to chase the, I want the spaghetti fetti al chino spot with the steak. And you don't have to chase all that bullshit. You don't have to. But I see why some girls are like, yo, because yo, she probably has friends that go on exclusive proper spots on their first dates. And this nigga's taking her to Shake Shack and she feels some type of way. That has nothing to do with this nigga, though. That has everything to do with your insecurities. 
You know what I'm saying? It has everything to do with her insecurity. She's insecure that she's at Shay Shack and she's on a date. Well, if you were that insecure about going to Shake Shack on your first date, why would you record yourself at Shake Shack on your first date? Instead, you would eat the food, go on the date, and if he seems like a decent human being, you're not even going to mind that you all went to Shake Shack. If he's a dickhead, then you can put him on blast and be like, this nigga took me to Shake Shack, and he's a dickhead, blah, blah. You'd be like, he's a dickhead, blah, 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 and he only took me to Shake Shack. Oh, he was a dickhead, and he took you to sh only to Shake Shack? Then it works in your benefit. But if you really want the internet to root for you, my guy, act appropriately or something. It's crazy out here. It's crazy that these, like, like there's people like this. There's men that do it too. Oh, can I, are you going to come back to my crib or can I come to your crib tonight? And she goes, no, um, we're splitting the bill. Nigga, she just met you. Most girls that just meet you, they don't want to, they're not going to go to your crib or they're not, you're not going to go to their crib. Most girls that just meet you, especially on the online tip or whatever, no. She might have to see you a couple times for her to feel comfortable and be like, you know what, yeah, I'll come, come back to your place. There's some girls, they don't give a fuck. They'll pull up, but they know their shit. They have their mace ready. They have all this shit ready, right? And they could tell if a nigga's, if that person's threatening or not, the way their demeanor is, the way they move, the way they act. But you can never know. You never know sometimes some of these nice motherfuckers. Anyways, that's why you just got to be you. You got to be yourself. Don't be too nice. Because there's going to become a day where you're going to snap. So don't be too nice. Be yourself. And don't be too mean and too aggressive because no one's going to want you after a while. Like, come on, bro. Like, lighten up a little bit. <laughs> like, why are you so mean all the time, bro? Anyways. So we're going to get into the outro. That was it, man. You already know what to do, what it is. This was the IVP with Dr. IBZ. I love all of y'all. Thank you for tuning in with me. We're out of here, man. So long, so long. That was episode, episode 215. Yo, we're almost out of here. We're almost out of here. 215.